Hello, my name is Simon Carley. I'm a professor of emergency medicine here in Manchester. I'm lucky enough to be speaking at the college conference and talking about a subject which I think is really interesting for us as emergency physicians, and that's about making good decisions. I think this is really key for us as emergency physicians because that's what we do. In the emergency department, we're dealing with an unselected group of patients of whom there isn't a background often. We're trying to make decisions about what to do with them, what their diagnoses are, what the probability of the getting a serious complication is. But we're doing it within a time period of that patient's disease where we don't have all the investigations, we don't have a massive history. We're often making time-critical, information-light decisions. And because of that, we rely on our judgment a lot. We're making probabilistic decisions about risk, using gestalt, using our thought processes, metacognition, thinking about thinking. That's what we do. And in many cases, or in many ways, emergency physicians have this unique skill. It is something which defines our specialty more than any other specialty, that we are thinkers. We make difficult decisions in difficult circumstances. I think that's really interesting because even at a conference like this, and a lot of our training programs are about skills, about knowledge, but we don't spend enough time thinking about thinking. And that's what this talk is about. How do we know that we're making those good decisions, those difficult probabilistic decisions in the ED? Well, the first thing to say is we're not very good at judging our own judgment. There's a great research from Dunning-Kruger. Scott Weingart may have also mentioned this in the conference here today, and there's some great links online about it. But it basically says that experts rate their ability less than novices. And that's, that seems the wrong way around, and it is. So people who are very early in their career often have high levels of confidence and low levels of competence. And actually, as your competence rises, your confidence goes down. And this is fascinating, but it does mean that we're not good at judging our own abilities. And similarly, if you think you're a good driver, well, 50% of you should be above average. But in studies, 93% of Americans think they're above average drivers. The bottom line is, we're not good at judging ourselves. But it is so incredibly important. Now, decisions are interesting in emergency medicine. You might think that by looking at audits, by looking at the outcomes of your patients, you can tell whether you're making good decisions, but I think you're wrong. And I'll give you an example about the difference between process and decision and outcome. 35-year-old chap turns up in the emergency department with a severe sudden onset headache at a football match. He collapses to the ground. But he wants to finish watching the football match, so he does. And it's six, eight hours until he comes into the ED, by which time his headache's mostly gone. And he's seen by a doctor who discharges him with no further care. Now, you're thinking now that this man may have had a subarachnoid hemorrhage, and I'm going to tell you that he died. Well, actually, he didn't. He was fine. Nothing happened. He didn't have a scan. He didn't get an LP. He didn't have a headache afterwards. He didn't get any of the anxiety or fear that he might have had a brain bleed. And he had a lovely, lovely life. He went on to live a ripe old age. Now, that's a terrible process. That should never have happened, but it's a great outcome. And similarly, we can do examples the other way around, where we have a great process, so putting somebody on low molecular weight heparin for a DBT, but they get a terrible outcome, such as a compartment syndrome. So if we're to think about judgment, about decisions, we have to analyse our process, and that's difficult. How do we do that at the moment? Well, we have some ideas in practice. We have mortality and morbidity reviews, and we, we practice our simulations for severe cases, those really difficult cases, but they're quite small in number. And some people now are working on doing great cases, so looking at when things went incredibly well, that patient that you saved at the roadside and a great outcome, and you snatched them from the jaws of death. That's great. But that's not the bulk of our work. The bulk of our work is in the middle. How do you know that you're making good judgments there. Because it might be that you're making poor judgments, but you never hear about it. You don't follow up your patients, or maybe you're just lucky. Maybe you don't examine a child for a rash every time they've got a fever and you've got no other obvious cause. You can do that for years before you miss the meningococcal septicemia. You could have bad practice now, and you could be unconsciously incompetent without knowledge of it. It's really difficult for us to make judgments about our own ability, and so we have to work hard at doing that. And the key to that is going to be feedback. Now, feedback works. There is a really good example of why feedback works, and we're in Manchester. It's the weather. If the weatherman says it's going to rain tomorrow, and it doesn't rain, that's good feedback. And that is a fantastic way of learning. And every other medical specialty gets feedback on their cases. You send a patient from clinic to another surgeon, they write back to you and tell you what happens. Or you'll see that patient again. But in emergency medicine, we don't do that. The loop of feedback that will improve our learning 
So we do something, we find out what happens, we change our practice, we do something else, we then embed it back in our practice. That loop's broken. We don't follow up our patients unless they're exceptional. And exceptional is good, but who would possibly try and learn a plane by studying acrobatics and crashing it into a cliff? If you want to fly a plane, learn how to fly it from London to Manchester day in, day out, and get slightly better at it every day. So what can you do? I think we can do some really simple things to improve our judgment. The first is to follow up your patients, not just the exceptional ones, but the routine ones. Go and have a look at the discharges from patients you've admitted and see if what they thought was what you thought. I picked up some interesting things. So patients I've referred with ACS, they were pericarditis. Now, nothing, nobody came to harm, so they didn't come into a mortality morbidity meeting. But I learned from that, and I think you can do too. The other thing is you can do peer review. One of the things we do in Manchester is we peer review as trauma team leaders. So if I go in and run a TTL session, one of my colleagues will watch what I do and give me feedback on my performance. And we thought that would improve the person who's being watched. Interestingly, it mostly improves the person who's doing the watching because they've got time out and they can see what other people do and learn from it and share from it. So simple things, and we'll talk about other things in the talk, it's a big talk, lots and lots of things to get through, but I just want you to stop, think, go away, and ask yourself, do you make good decisions in the ED? And if you think you do, how do you know?